Okay, our story begins in the post-Civil War era, a time marked by significant social and political upheaval. Despite the abolition of slavery, African Americans faced relentless persecution and violence. A disturbing pattern emerged. Black communities thriving economically and socially became targets of white male mobs often incited by baseless accusations made by white women. These accusations frequently led to horrific acts of violence, including lynchings and massacres. Ida B. Wells, a courageous crusader, she was, um, she did not care. Um, into this climate of fear and justice stepped Ida B. Wells, a fearless journalist and civil rights activist. Wells, through her investigative journalism, challenged the prevailing narratives used to justify these atrocities. Her seminal work, The Red Record, meticulously documented the lynchings of African Americans, revealing the true motives behind these acts of terror. Wells' bravery in the face of immense danger and opposition was a beacon of hope and a call to action for justice and equality. In a pivotal moment of her career, Ida B. Wells boldly confronted the women's suffrage movement. She challenged the prevailing narratives within the movement that often ignored or justified the false accusation against black men. Wells argued that these accusations were not only baseless, but were being used as tools to perpetuate racial violence. Her stance created a significant rift, as many in the movement were unwilling to address the intersectionality of race and gender. This exchange highlights Wells' unwavering commitment to truth and justice even in the face of opposition from allies. They like to use that word, allies. <laughs> we delve into specific incidents, such as the Memphis Massacre of 1866. Now remember, the Civil War ended in 1865. So, just one year after the end of the Civil War, Black people pissed off enough people, enough white people, for them to massacre just one year after emancipation. In a year, if you think about that, one year, 365 days. The bus boycott was 366 days. After some of these men have lost limbs, uh, family, um, men and women, I would add. They sought out to go and destroy black communities and black people, minding our own business, in our own little world, because, of course, um, most or majority of black people were in their own worlds until someone came in and started poking a bear or poking us, I would say. But a year after fight, bloodshed, and everything, the most is still considered today the bloodiest war in U.S. history. Um, the most people died in the Civil War on this landmass, during the Civil War on this landmass. Um, it was estimated about 500,000 people died, if I'm not mistaken. That's a rough estimate. But of all the death, blood, destruction, and hurt and turmoil, turmoil, White men didn't want to stop. <laughs> they set out to do more. Um, and we, a 
assume that these are black men. I mean, I'm sorry, white men. Of course, it's not black men. These are white men who probably fought in the Civil War. Um, they probably was, you know, had some high ranking in the Civil War. Um, and they most likely were Confederates. They probably fought on the Confederate side. Although, let's not overlook the behavior of the white Union troops. Um, often similar to the behavior of the white Southern troops. Um, if you just think only a little bit was needed to justify something that they were probably gonna do or planning to do anyway. But they didn't need much. Um, if you recall during the Civil War, um, in the Confederate States, when the Union soldiers would come to, you know, confiscate the uh, property or um, land, whatever it may be, of the slave owners, former, former slave owners, and high-ranking officials in the Confederate, um, Confederate Army, most times, well, I wouldn't say most times, let's just set this up. Now, you're going to the home of a Confederate soldier who's in the army, actively in battle. Um, he's not at home, okay? <laughs> so when the northern troops go through the south, some of the behaviors that were prevalent in the South, often violent, um, sadistic, inflicted upon African enslaved people, um, those Northern soldiers went about that same behavior, those same actions in the South, going through those um, Confederate uh, states. And oftentimes they were met with, you know, women, the mistress of the house, of course, white women, and maybe, you know, black um, maid, or they were considered the help, um, most likely an enslaved person. But um, instead of, I don't know, arresting or confiscating the property of the uh, formal slave owner, uh, they would enact violence on those. Um, and even though the Union soldiers were set out to, quote-unquote, free the slaves, um, that didn't absolve them from that behavior that they inflicted upon those formerly slave owners and their wives and daughters. And so I bring that up to say that even though they're fighting on opposite sides for different reasons or so, 
the characteristics of those opposing sides were not too much different. Um, many women were raped. I don't understand if you're in war. It, I guess um, it's so many, it's about fighting um, and it's about winning. How does rape get in there? How does anything or any type of sexual violence is involved? How is that? No one really addresses that. Um, no one talks about it. They always avoid it. Um, it's completely almost devoid of history, even when uh, describing these southern slave owners. They completely dismiss the fact that most of those enslaved Africans on that plantation were raped um, by white men. So in White men's quest to free black people. They somehow was able to include sexual violence. I, it's just one thing I never understand. And I am not... I don't, I don't think I want to say I'm not. I don't know how that is. When thinking about liberation, none of that comes to mind. When thinking about liberation, violence does come to mind. Oftentimes because in order for people to liberate themselves or to be liberated, violence is necessary. Um... And that's, of course, not okay, but it's a sort of a conundrum. I wouldn't be trying to, I wouldn't need liberation unless there were violence involved. So when we think of our liberation, wanting to free us and our people, we cannot overlook that some violence will be involved. Not only because our counterparts are innately violent, but because in taking or attempting to take the liberation of someone else, it involves violence. And in order for anyone to... get their liberation then they would have to do either the same thing that was used to take it or something very very close and so I don't want to ignore that part because violence is violence either way but sexual violence is different. It's 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 different. It it there is a there's a power dynamic involved. Even though in fighting for liberation of a, a people, there's a power dynamic involved in that. One had to have the power over the other in order for the other to be fighting to get their liberation. There had to be some sort of power struggle there. But I, I can't for the life of me understand why an added level 